Hi guys, welcome back to Jungle Flowers Canada. My name is Grania and thanks for joining me. So guys, today's video is a little bit of a mixed bag. I wanted to update you on some changes I made to my original IKEA greenhouse. I also wanted to take you around to show you my plants. Not so much a house tour, but just to talk about a few things and show you my other two greenhouses. I also wanted to take you out to my actual greenhouse, my wooden structured actual greenhouse, which I haven't showed you in quite a while and I wanted to discuss some of the plans that I have for that. Spring is coming, it's getting exciting. I have two shipments coming in, so I'm really looking forward to that. One from Ecuador and one from Thailand. So I just wanted to talk a little bit about that. I also wanted to show you my prop box. So I have a lot of my cans cuttings in there and I wanted to show them to you. They were tiny little just wet stick, I guess you would call them cuttings. A lot of them didn't have any leaves on them at all. They've been in there for quite a while. I would say probably two months, two and a half months maybe. And I wanted to show you the progress on them and then I'm, I have potted them up. And I now have them in soil and I have them ready under my grow lights to grow their um, soil roots. And then I will actually use them in exchanges. Okay guys, I'm going to do a little update on my Ikea cabinet. So this is my original one guys that I painted green, my $40 one. So I'm just gonna tell you all the things I changed from when I originally put, put it in. So originally I had glass shelves and you'll see I changed that to wire shelves. So how did we do that? It's probably easier to show you here. Oh, I'm very zoomed in, sorry. So we got these metal bars. Oops. And you can see my husband measured them. Now he's he did little cutouts there for them so that they would rest on the little bars that hold the glass. And then I had these shelves down in my basement. So you can see they're not quite the full width of the greenhouse cabinet, which is absolutely fine. It worked out well for me because I was able to, you know, drape plants over it. So it wasn't really um, any inconvenience. And then I initially started with three shelves. So now, just the other day, I put in an extra shelf, a fourth shelf. The reason I did that was because I'm not putting as tall plants in it anymore. So when I first did it, I put my Monsteria Thai Constellation in. And guys, I will let you know again that these grow lights, these lights, they're not grow lights, these lights are just 4,000 Kelvin lights that I bought in Costco. They were $38.99 for three lights. Now, when I put the extra shelf in, I did have to buy another set. So I was able to just add in an extra one. And I, I do have two extra ones there now, which I am actually going to put in my dining room in behind the bulkhead. So I wanna show you how happy my plants are in here. They are having no issues at all with the light. So this morning when I came down, I've opened the door so it's gone down to 43 but this morning when I came down the humidity was actually 71 so just have a look and see how nicely all the plants are doing they're all growing away no issues at all and what I did was I used to have actually this little humidifier here I used to have this in there but I noticed that my mirror was getting very fogged up so I decided to take it out and I also in the beginning I put weatherproofing around the door but I also removed that so what I do now is I just have this tray that I bought in Dollarama I do have a video up of all the little hacks that I picked up at Dollarama and it has teeth in it let me see if I can zoom in so it's actually a cutting board right so I obviously keep the water below the top level and then I just set my plants on there. And then to hide it, I put this bit of bark across it. So, you know, when you're looking in, it's not as obvious. I also bought this little tray. It's like a mug tray from Dollarama. So I could give the plants a little bit more height. And then underneath there, I have my fan. So my fan is a little too strong. So I actually have it facing down and I only put it on for like a couple of hours a day. And there's no smell, like there's no musty smell in here. It smells perfectly fine, no issues at all. So 
I said this before, you need to find out what works for you and what works for your plants. Uh, there's many different um, design ideas out there and you need to find the one that's right for you. I don't have, I mean, I have some aeroids in here. There's my dragon scale philodendron and my baby, um, what is it called, alocasia uh, black velvet. And I have a brantianum there, but it's mostly Hoyas that I have in here. Now, if you're having bigger plants and you want the plants to be further away from the light, then, you know, maybe you will need a grow light. For me, I, I've had no issues at all with these lights, but that's not saying that one is right and one is wrong. You can use whatever is good for you, whatever works for you, and of course, whatever you can afford. You'll see there, I have a little Mame wet stick, but I keep it cloched, and that's just cloched with a Dollarama vase that was like a dollar fifty or dollar twenty-five. And you can see there's some things there rooting in moss. So, guys, there isn't a right way or a wrong way. You just have to find the right way for you. And I've discovered that I didn't need to have a humidifier. Even though the humidity was lovely with the humidifier in there, it did bring other problems. I didn't need the weather stripping. So when I had the weather stripping on and I had the humidifier on, I got a lot of pooling of water on the ground. So it didn't work for me, guys. And you can see. So how long have I had this IKEA greenhouse now? Maybe, is it four months? Maybe about four months. And like a lot of these plants have been in here since the very beginning. That beautiful um, Ahoya Kerry splash. And it's put out lots of beautiful growth. So um, what else has put out a lot of growth? The This um, Hoish Galliana has really grown. The um, acu uh, Acuta variegata, and look, there's lots of white leaves there. Um, this has grown like exponentially. This was tiny when I put it in. You can see my Matilde is very happy. I got this from a plant friend, Paula, and she had it in Lechuza Pond. And I was a little nervous transferring it back into soil, but soil is just happens to be my personal preference but it transitioned beautifully it's very happy and very healthy i've had lots of growth here on my elliptica i've had lots of growth on my um, australis so uh, as, as i say that um black velvet is a new baby that was off my mother plant so i have the mother plant out in my actual my wooden greenhouse so i have had no issues at all with growth in this cabinet it has been fantastic. So now basically I've gone back to basics. <laughs> I have no humidifier. I have no weatherproofing. I just have this tray with water, which I top up. I do keep a watering can up here in it all the time as well. And I have a fan that I run for maybe two or three hours a day. So let me close the door. Of course, I have my beautiful mic hands there, guys. I'll show you. She is so pretty. I love my cans. She's about, well, I guess she's two and a half, three years old now. So that's why there's so much growth on her. Um, but she's taken her couple of wallops <laughs> over the time as well. And there I have my string of hearts. And if you can see, I am trellising it. And it's doing nicely. And that's just a homemade trellis that I made. I did do a video, my Dollarama video, I did show you how to make a homemade trellis. But I just wanted to update you on my greenhouse. Let me see if I can, I know I'm going to need to back back here. Okay, so guys, there it is. Let's zoom in a little bit. And I've moved this. It was in what is now my dining room. And now I have moved it into my den. So it's doing very nicely and it's very happy. So while I'm here, I'm going to update you as well on my little terrarium. Let's zoom out. So this terrarium, I did do a video of how I made it. I put a light in it, as you'll, you can see there. And that little plant there is a magnificum, um, an Anthurium magnificum. You can see my jewel orchids. So they're starting to flower. 
I can't remember the names of them. And for a while there, I did take this piece of glass out, but then I realized, you know what, there is enough room. So I put the piece of glass back in. Um, I have a little begonia there. I don't know what one it is, but I've had it for a couple of years. I don't know what it is. I took the top off my maculata because it was like literally uh, totally bent out of shape. It wasn't getting enough light. And I also put a cutting of a dubia in there. I'm not sure how well that is doing. And I added a couple of cuttings of variegated string of hearts. Can you see them there? I just did some butterfly cuttings of them. So I don't know if you can see that little just there, there's a little nub sticking out and that's actually my Anthurium crystallinum cross forgetii. I did check the roots just recently and the roots are still looking great. So I'm hoping that that's going to come back. That sad looking plant here. So I was rooting Cebu blue and I didn't realize that this was actually not in water. So I stuck it in here. Isn't that so cute? So what else could I talk to you about? So here's my Skindapsis argyreus. So I've actually had this a couple of years and I transplanted it into these self-watering pots and I think it's had plant shock. So first of all, I thought, oh, it doesn't have water. So I checked the self-watering pot and it was dry. It had actually wicked up all the water. So I gave it some water because that's usually what it looks like when it needs water. So it's quite moist at the moment, but I actually think it's just gone into plant shock. And sometimes these, like if you take a cutting of these, they quite often curl up. So I'm just going to leave it for a while and see what happens. If I think I'm going to lose it, I'll take some cuttings and I'll make a new plant. But I just wanted to let you know that even though I'm, you know, a relatively experienced plant mama, things like this happen us all. And look at my mic hands. So if you were watching the video when I did this, I cut this my cans back till there was absolutely no leaves on it. So this is all new growth. It's very happy. So here is my little, this is completely reliant on grow lights, guys. Completely reliant on grow lights. There's no light in my hall at all. Just a little update here. Actually, I've got to put some water in my humidifier. If you saw my video where I put this wine rack on the wall and I had struggled to attach one leaf, this leaf here, to the wine rack. Can you see how many leaves have grown since? And there's another one there. So I reduced the moss pole. I do, do have extendable moss poles and you can see that it's starting to grow. Now guys, this Rafida for Tetrasperma is not a tissue culture. I bought, there's two plants in here. I bought one plant in the beginning of 2019 here in Canada. I actually got it from Jill Jensen Nurseries which has, is now gone down to Florida. And the other one was an import from Thailand. Um, so definitely the one I got from Jill Jensen's is not a tissue culture. And I'm not sure if the one from Thailand is or not, but I do notice that one grows better than the other. So this one here is the one that's growing all the way up. And this one here, I did propagate one of them. I'm not sure which, so that's a propagation there. But this one here is relatively slow. You can see a growth, oh, let me pull back. This one here is relatively slow. You can see the growth point, the growth point, I can't talk today. And there is a leaf there, but that is much slower than the other. So I'm wondering, is that determined by possibly the one from Thailand being a tissue culture and the other one not? I'm not sure. Like it's beautifully healthy, nothing wrong with it, but it just doesn't grow as fast. Like this new propagation that I just did like a couple of months ago is already throwing out lots of growth. But this one is very, very slow. This one here is very slow. So there's my crystallinum, my mandulopathos, which is finally recovering, guys. So this got thrips, look, and I cut off all the thrip damaged parts. But now I have some nice new leaves happening there. My fry deck, love, love, love this plant. So I finally staked my philodendron painted lady. I did do a video on that and she's very happy. This is supposed to be a variegated pink syngonium splash. I do have um, two or three more of them, but this one, 
has a very muted pink almost all over it so I'm not sure if there was a mistake in the shipping. Okay guys sorry about that that was my daughter. So um, my Syngonium Splash. So guys look at that fabulous leaf and then look green green. Now I could cut them off and try and encourage more variegation but I'm actually just going to leave it and see what happens. Let's just play that one out and see what happens. Here's the thigh constellation. So this was the top cutting. She's doing beautiful. Oops, sorry about that. And then this is the original plant and I love this leaf. Look at that leaf. But guess what's coming guys? A new shoot and it looks like it might have some very nice variegation on it. So they're actually just here side by side now. Um, my Maharani, I did lose a leaf from the Maharani. I'm not sure what's going on with it. Um, but the other leaves are pretty well okay. There's a little bit of staining on that leaf. Let's make sure there's no buggies on there. No, no bugs. But anyway, it's um, hopefully, like I don't get an awful lot of sun in here in the winter. This is an east facing window. So it's not great in the winter. So now that the days are getting longer, I'm getting a little bit more sun. My Carstenianum or Peru. And here's my Birkin. And it's getting a really white leaf there. I love this plant. I have a few of them, too many of them actually. Okay, so I'm going to move on. Sorry guys, I'm getting into the zone here. So here is my retro cabinet, just to show you in case you haven't seen it before. So I have two of these. I bought these on Kijiji. I absolutely adore them. And I have one of those uh, trays in there. I actually just filled it again because it was empty. And you can see there, I just use a bit of driftwood to kind of disguise it. And here, it ha this has become one of my most favorite plants. It is the Silver Sword and it's getting, oops, sorry, I'm hitting off the glass there. It's getting a new leaf. Again, guys, Costco lights. Plants are flying in here. Look at the amount of growth on my Retusa foot, Retusa, Flora, I never get this one right. Look at the amount, oh, sorry, I went dark there. Look at the amount of growth on this. This has just taken off since I put it in here. There is my, oops, there is my Australis Lisa. New growth on there. Uh, new growth on my, I can't pronounce this, Anglia, Anglia, oh gosh, I'm not sure what it is. It's, but anyway, I'll put the name up and it's getting all that new growth just from being in here. Again, I have a watering can in there and look at my elliptica, like flying guys. My elliptica is doing wonderfully and my variegated string of hearts. And look at all the new growth on my Bella. So like they're, they're just loving these greenhouses, loving them. Now guys, do not laugh. I bought this little fan for $8.99. Sorry, I'm just going to turn it off. You just have to charge it. So I only run the fan for a couple of hours a day. So I just picked this up just because it went, but I didn't really want to spend any more money on stuff. I've been buying so many things lately, but it's a great little thing. So I just, I charge it and then I just stick it in here for a couple of hours until it runs out of power and away it goes. Now I'll show you not much happening with my Dubia. Well, I think it's probably no, not much happening with my Dubia. This is the one I bought for my daughter, which needs to be rehabbed. And she just, I don't know what she did to it. So this one is the one I want to go up the wood, but not, not too much happening on it. So here is the other cabinet. And I don't have the, the tr humidity tray in here yet, but I do have the little fountains in both of them. And look at this little fan. So this is a fan humidifier, but I actually don't use the humidifier part. This thing, you just hold it for like two seconds and away it goes. And it only lasts for a couple of hours and then it stops. So there, look at the beautiful sun stressing on my sunrise. I love it. There's another painted lady philodendron. I did lose one leaf, but I think that you can see there, there's a new one coming. And look, there's another new leaf coming on my Sarawak. So this is my Hoya. These are two new leaves since I got it. And then this is another new leaf coming here. Look at the amount of new growth on this, guys. This is the variegated Bella. I got this. There was literally only these little four leaves there. This is all new growth. And it seems to be loving life. 
these are the propagations that I took for the mic hands that were down in my prop box and I planted those up in there and they're doing great and this is like incredible so when I put this plant in here it just had these bottom leaves this is all new growth all new growth so it's really loving it in here um, here is these this trubii is I tell you it's one plant that will give you a run for your money it's not that it's difficult it's just very slow growing and it doesn't like to be moved so when I imported this all the leaves curled and now they're just starting to not well some of them are starting to unfurl and they're getting new growth but this does not like to be moved that's for sure new growth on the Hoysh Galeana uh, the Callistophylla hasn't done too much in this one there's my hope you can see new growth on my hope and then this see all the little new growth there this is the oops let's bring it around here this is the cream splash the philodendron cream splash new growth on that and that is my other syngonium pink splash actually that's a dead leaf does it need to be watered the only thing i find guys is the plants dry out very quickly i'm watering much more frequently i'm not a heavy waterer though so it could be just that I'm not giving them enough water. So you can see here, I just have another piece of bark in there, but I will be putting that tray in here as well. Now look at my Mandula pothos. So guys, I put this in here and I put some fishing line, you probably won't be able to see it, to, so that I could trail this up and look at how much it has grown. The fishing line, oops, is here. So look at how much the mandula has grown. And it's just getting light from up there. I don't know what you can see because I can't see it right now. But um, it's doing great. So my hope is that it will grow all the way up this shutter. And as it gets to the top, I think it'll get bigger up there because the light will be facing upwards. So there is my mandula. And there is my, what is it called? Dancing bones. Ripsalis, my Zizi, and then this, wait till you see the growth on this. I gotta take, let me take this out. So guys, can you see the growth on this? Now it, they're small because they're just getting the light from that as well. But when I put this in here, I wasn't able to catch this onto the wire. And now look how much it's grown. Now I think when it gets up to the other side, it will probably get bigger because it will get more light. But isn't it just doing terrific? This here, all this here is all new growth. That's kind of the original. You can see the bigger leaves are the original plant. And all of this is new growth. So I'm just going to let this go. Like I say, the hope is that they will trail up the wall. Look how well they're doing. Like from there to here. Now, I don't mind that they're small. But so you can see, look, there's the second um, fishing line. So we're nearly up to the second. So I'm very pleased with that. So guys, I haven't brought you out to my greenhouse in quite a while. So I am going to do a full rearrangement out here. Finally, the evenings are getting a little bit longer and I'm starting to get some sun in here. So I am going to take my succulent planters back downstairs and put them under my grow lights. But anyway, I wanted to show you what's happening out here. So there's that my cans that I trellised. I'm excited to see what will happen there. Can you see the beautiful leaves on it? So this was a, this was a um, propagation. So I'm hoping that it will take off and do beautifully. So I moved all my calatheas out here. This had died back. I thought it was dead. And then I saw tiny little shoots. So that's actually totally recovered. I cut down my maculata because it was like all different shapes. And I don't know if you've seen this, but there's a variegated leaf on my Birkin. I love it. Isn't it so cute? And here is my bird of paradise, which I'm event it's going to outgrow here eventually. But I just thought, you know, what? it's so lovely. But I'm, my plan would be I may put this outside in the summer, um, but then I know it's going to get very big. Here is this beautiful Syngonium again. Baltic, I think it might be called. I will look it up because I do have it. I had to take a note of it. The lady who sold it to me has to remind me every time. There is the Syngonium Pink Splash. As you can see, I have a couple of Dubia. 
beautiful crystal, um, no, Callistophylla. Look at how well this is doing, my string of turtles. I had this upstairs for like two years and it just, you know, it did grow. You can see there's nice length on it. But since I moved it here, it's just taking off. It's having a great old time. Ruby necklace. But the most exciting, guys, remember, I vacuumed my philodendron tiger tooth ring of fire. So actually, the leaf that I had broken just fell off the other day. But look at the new growth. I'm so excited. Boy, am I excited now. You know how much they're worth now? I think I paid like $32 to import that and they're like $250 to buy here now and they're $150 to buy from Thailand. So this is my Epipremnum Panatum Variegata, which got thrips. So I took a top cutting off of it, oops, and I have it um, propagating downstairs. I tried it in spag and guys, it started to rot. So I now have it in water, but you can see there, can you see there's a new leaf coming? So this is my silver dragon and the sun is so beautiful out here. I have just put this out with my mame. So I think they're going to love it out here just because, this, as I say, the sun is coming in in the evenings and it's gorgeous here now. Here is my uh, philodendron pink princess, guys. This moss pole was hilarious, but I just said I'd use it on this. I made it with Dollarama um, chicken wire. Oh my God, it was so funny. It was like a sausage. It was so floppy. So I had to put a load of tie wraps on it or zip ties as you call them. Um, but I just said I'd, I'd put it on here anyway and I'd use it for the time being. My Syngonium, oh I think my Syngonium, got, oh it did, it got a new leaf. Oh look at that baby leaf. It was hidden, I didn't see it before. Oh that's gorgeous, look at the variegation on that. Uh, so this was like, I was actually give, going to give this away. This totally deteriorated but it has bounced back. There's a Hoya Shepardii, another Mike Hands. Christmas cactus. This is discolour. Look at the length of this, guys. What a prolific grower. So, I just need to get myself organised. I'm going to totally rearrange here. I have a, a, quite a few really nice plants coming from, in, from Ecuador and from Thailand. So I'm going to put them here. So I'm going to move that bird of paradise I may stick her in this corner here or this corner here and I'm going to get rid of all the succulents and I'm going to make this a little tropical haven. So this is going to be completely rearranged. I just sort of had everything huddled under this grow light for the winter because there really wasn't enough light coming in. But guys, I have had no issues with heat, none whatsoever. I'll just show you. My son and my husband built this for me. It's fully insulated. It's like minus... I don't know, 12 out there at the moment, and it's toasty warm in here. My electricity bill though is huge, but anyway, that's it. Okay guys, so I got a treat today. Let me take his dody out. Can I have your dody? Can I have your dody? Give Nana your dody. Oh, he's a good boy. Say hi. Say hello to Nanny's friends. Where's my angel? Where's my angel? And he's off. Hey Quinn. Say hi. Say hi. <gasps> there, he does that for hi. <laughs> he's so adorable. Oh my God, being a grandmother is probably the most rewarding thing of my life. I absolutely love being a grandmother. Okay guys, we're down in my plant room and I have a couple of jobs I need to do down here. I'm going to get out my prop box because I've been propagating my cans cuttings and I think it might be about time to start popping them up. So let me just grab them and we'll take a look. Okay guys, so here is the prop box. Look at all those baby philodendron my cans. Now you see there's a few other bits in there. I actually can't quite remember what's in here. So, oh my gosh, I can't believe. So most of these guys didn't have any leaves on them. They were just um, little pieces of the stem with nodes. <laughs> the roots which one do you belong to okay look at how cute they are oh my I think it's time to pot these babies up some of them are a great size oh look the roots have all intertwined that's too funny 
some roots have gone from one pot into another. <laughs> but look at the roots on them. Isn't nature wonderful? I just love it. So I'm going to get some pots and we're going to pot these babies up. Now I wish I had some smaller pots. This is the only thing. So I do have these little square ones, which I will use. And then I have these small ones. So I don't have a huge amount. So let's pot up what we can. And oh, there's some more in here. And let's see how we get on. By the way, guys, my plant room is badly in need of another clean. But that is for another day. So let's have a look and see what we're going to do here. Okay, so first of all, I will take the plant out of the pot with the roots. So it's sphagnum moss. Oh my gosh, the roots are incredible, guys. Let's just drop the sphagnum over here so I can show you the roots. Wow, they did amazing. Now, funny, I put my Epipremnum panatum variegata into a um, spag bag <laughs> um, and it started to rot. So I had to take it out, um, which was worrying because that's an expensive plant. So um, I've just actually now put it into water to root. Uh, but these these guys it worked so well for these so i'm just gently trying to remove as much sphagnum as i can look at the length of the roots guys that is incredible that is so fantastic but i'm not going to sacrifice roots to get all i leave some of the sphagnum on if it means Sometimes it's hard to tell if it's a root or if it's just the moss, right? Let me see this here. Okay. Okay, I'm not going to take any more than that off. So look at that cute little cutting. So let's get some soil. And we will pop our little plant in there. Actually, I usually wear gloves. So let me go get some gloves. Okay, so I'm going to put my soil in. And I will keep these under my grow lights until they get more established. So there's one. That's brilliant. I need to find somewhere actually better to put these. And now I'm just going to put it here. Okay, let's look at the next one. Sorry, this is funny. Okay, so here's another one. Let's get this out. Ah, I just broke the roots, guys. Okay, so I just broke the roots on that. And look at how nice they were. I should have just pushed it up from there. That was kind of stupid. Oh, look at all those lovely roots. Okay, so you're gonna to have to go back in. And actually there's roots up here that I'm gonna take off. So I'm just gonna put this baby back in and hopefully it will root again. I kind of made a mess of that one. Okay, so I'll know what to do next time. I'll put you here. Okay, so I'm going to push it up from the bottom. There we go. That's better. All right. So let's have to be so gentle, guys, because the roots are actually very delicate. Very, very delicate. So I really have to take my time doing this. I won't obviously do all of them on camera, guys, because um, we could be here till next week for that. So let's just do a couple. I'll show you some more roots and then we can take a look at what else is in here. Because as I say, I actually can't quite remember what's even in here. So, push these in. 
Guys, I should tell you a little bit about um, my love of plants. So, my dad was actually a horticulturist by profession, and although he didn't work in the industry for a long time, he always kept beautiful gardens at our house, and he grew all our own vegetables, potatoes, um, tomatoes, lettuce, onions, you know, all the usual stuff, and of course cabbage, because we love our green cabbage in Ireland. And, um, and I think I got his green thumb because when I would plant anything in the garden, it would grow. And when my husband would plant anything in the garden, it wouldn't grow. So it got to be like a joke, it was funny. You know, sometimes I'd plant flowers and we'd joke that it was like the day of the Triffids because they would take off so well. Um, and then when he'd plant stuff, it, they wouldn't have the same effect. But I think that my that's kind of where my would you call it a skill set? I don't know if you call it a skill set because obviously, you know, um, well, I think taking care of plants is easy. Some people don't, but I'm just lucky, I guess. I just, um, I just always had good luck. I'm not saying I haven't killed plants. Of course I have. We all have. Even the best of us will kill plants. But I think that I have a natural love for it because of my father. Um, he was always you know, great at keeping plants and um, growing flowers in the garden and things like that, you know. So um, so that's kind of, I think, the source of my love <laughs> for plants. I always kept a really nice outdoor garden. Um, I always had, you know, lots of plants and I often got comments on my gardens um, in all of my houses that I've lived in. So as we say, I didn't lick it off the ground. <laughs> I, uh, I think I have a genuine love because of my um, my dad. So here I have this Hoya cutting. If you remember, guys, I showed you this Hoya cutting, but it was actually upside down. So um, it was sitting in, it was rooted this way. So I think obviously it should be rooted this way. So I have that sitting in here, but the roots are coming again up on the other end. I don't know what's going on with this baby. Maybe the Maybe it just got twisted, did it? So I've been trying to get it to root this way, but nothing's happening that way. The roots are coming on that end. Okay, I'll give it another little bit just to see if it will change direction. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. You may be wondering why my propagation came to a sudden stop. Well, I was chatting away and I was potting up plants and I didn't realize that my camera had actually turned off. It had run out of battery. So sorry that it ended so abruptly, but I hope you got the idea. I will update you later on to let you know how they're all doing in soil. So guys, if you have any questions or comments, don't forget to ask below. If you wouldn't mind giving me a thumbs up, I would so appreciate it. I'm going to ask you again, if you've watched till the end, put the green heart in the comments. And if you haven't already subscribed, guys, I would really appreciate it if you would. You guys have a wonderful day and thanks for joining me.